So I, I need to reboot just for a second. I had masks for the students this morning for our incoming freshmen, so I need to make sure I don't give the same homily that I gave to a group of incoming <laughs> freshmen. Acne, no. Uh, breaking up with a girlfriend, no. I think we're good. All right, we're good. Um, yeah, just I, I thought really honestly, uh, beautiful, beautiful scriptures for the end of our time together. Paul says to the Corinthians, I just have to get this. First off, the, the students like to get pictures when I have my glasses on. So they're all like, they think I look old. So, <laughs> um, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. It's not just like talking about it, but he, he wants us to be able to see it. And, and when I, I mean, I think if we're honest, that just kind of stirs us a little bit because we spend so much of our time rather than allowing people to see our, even see our weaknesses, but to boast of them. And we spend a lot of our time actually trying to shield it. You know, what can we do to shield it so that people don't see our weakness, that, that, that they think we've got it all together? So we try to present this, this image of, you know, everything's great, everything's wonderful, see how amazing, strong, and all these kinds of things. And Paul says, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. So, I mean, we could stand up here and it said, you know, how disorganized I am or how I procrastinate or how at times I put things off or I'm not honest or all these kinds of things, right, that Paul says that he's willing actually to boast of these things. How much time do we spend actually trying to present ourselves in a manner that allows us to be seen in the best light possible with everything together? Father's amazing. Deacon's so great. Seen with his kids. Father's just great, right? And Paul's saying, I, I, I boast of my weakness, but not just of the books. I boast of the things that show it. So not just in principle. I boast of the things that people are able to see it and shows them my weakness. And why would he do that? I think the first off, and I think it's important for us to recognize this, the first off is the reason Paul would boast of his weakness was because he was weak. And that's truth. It's simply truth. So if we're going to preach the truth, if we're going to preach the whole truth that we talked about, part of our experience and part of our reality, brothers, is we are weak. Amen? Amen. We ought not apologize for that. Because what we understand when Paul is speaking about this is that there's something actually really something beautiful about that. But it's also the way that he's going to engage the community that he's talking to. Because he goes, the first thing he goes off with this whole list of things that he's done. You know, I'm a good Jew. I'm a good priest. I'm a good deacon. I'm a good Catholic. I'm whatever. But then he goes on and says, five times to the Jew, I received 40 lashes minus one. I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. I'd like to talk a little bit more about that some other time. <laughs> Certainly didn't inhale, but whatever, right? Right. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed through the night in the deep on frequent journeys. And then he goes, dangers in rivers, dangers from Roger, dangers of my own race, dangers in the Gentiles, dangers in the cities, dangers in the wilderness, dangerous in the sea, dangerous. And we just go through this whole list of things. All right. So you look at this and it's like, Paul, you're the dude. I mean, seriously, you've gone through all this. My, my story would be another committee meeting, another meeting, right? Another budget meeting. It's like, woe is my life, right? You got nothing over me, Paul, right, right? But the problem is, is that we look at this, and that's why it's important that we see where he ends. He looks at this, and we could actually, it's like, that's not been my experience. I mean, my guess is most of us have never been beaten with a rod. Never, I was guessing no one of us has been stoned. I won't even talk about that, all right? Let's we'll leave that. But, but so this is not right. This has not been our, so Paul puts this out, but then what he goes is, and he goes, with all of this being said, here's what I want to boast about. I want to boast that I'm weak. And the reason is, is because the people that he's preaching to and the people that we're doing ministry to can compare, can relate more to the fact that I can boast of my weakness than this. Than this, this long list of how great and amazing Paul was. And he says, but now what I'm going to boast about is my weakness. I think what this allows us to do, brothers, is, is it allows us to be seen as we are. And if I try to present myself, you know, hello, I'm Father, and I've got everything together, and, and whose story is that in our congregation? And, and how honest is it? How true is it that I present myself without weakness? And it's clear that we understand that when Paul's talking about weakness, he's not talking about sin. 
Those are profoundly different. He's talking about weakness. He's talking about the human condition. He's talking about difficulty and struggle and sometimes being afraid and sometimes being lonely and sometimes wondering, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And, and suffering. In the midst of, so Paul, that's, that's what he's talking about. And we need to be able to, I think, embrace this, brothers, because Jesus was weak. We hear, and, and this is an image that I don't think we pray a lot about, you know, the great Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, Redeemer, Alpha, the Omega, all of that, absolutely true. And Hebrews tells us he's weak. That we have a high priest who can sympathize with us because he was beset with weakness. We, we look at weakness as something that we need, we need to get past. We need to get over these weaknesses. And what we hear Paul says is not only I'm not going to get past them, I'm going to embrace them. And I'm going to boast of them. We have a high priest who was weak and beset with that. I mean, imagine, that. I love the, the Philippian text, though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, right? That this kenosis that Jesus, part of that is his weakness. That he becomes vulnerable. He becomes the almighty, omnipotent, all holy one is now limited in his humanity. And he embraces that. When I was in seminary, uh, one, of a, one of the things I had to read was an article. We, we talk about how great, you know, you, you meet a person, a young guy, and it's like, well, this person's great. He's amazing. He, he'd be a great priest because he's, he's perfect and he's smart and he's talented and he's engaging. And all. We should make this person a priest. You know, it was all of us, right? <laughs> so we had to read this article, and it spoke, it's written for priests, but I think it's true for all of us. And it says uh, that the title of the article is um, Because He Was Beset by Weakness. And the tenor is, um, not are you great enough to be a priest? Not are you great enough to be a deacon or a disciple? Are you weak enough? Are you weak enough? How, how are we going to be able to deal in our ministry with weakness, with failure, with difficulty? struggle. And if we don't learn how to deal with that, and we earn, please Lord, one day you have to embrace that weakness, does everything fall apart? And one of the things that it does, I think, in this article that was really, really beautiful was it, it makes this comparison between Jesus, who was beset by weakness, and Socrates, and how they went to their death. He says there's a classic comparison running through contemporary philosophy between Socrates and Christ a judgment between them and human excellence. Socrates went to his death with calmness and poise. He accepted the judgment of the court, discoursed on the alternative suggested by death, and on the dialectic indications of immorality, found no cause for fear, drank the poison, and he died. Jesus, how much on the contrary, Jesus was almost hysterical with terror and with fear, with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. He looked repeatedly to his friends for comfort and prayed for an escape, begged for an escape from death, but he found neither. Finally, he established control over himself and moved into his death in silence and lonely isolation, even into the terrible interior suffering of a hidden divinity, the app of what seemed to be God being absent. I just, I love reflecting on this image of Jesus the night before he died and, and this wrestling, this back and forth, and this, ah, there's got to be, I mean, this, I can relate to that, right? If Jesus would have just marched on up, it's like, here, put the, put the nail right here because it would be better, but he didn't. He wrestled with this and he struggled. And he's like, Lord, if there's any other way. In his weakness, and yet he ultimately, as we hear, he ultimately embraces it. The author will go on to say, Now I believe that Jesus was more pro a profoundly weak man than Socrates, more liable to physical pain and weariness, more sensitive to human rejection and contempt, more affected by love and hate. Socrates never expressed sorrow and pain over betrayal of his friends. He was possessed and integral, never overextended, convinced that the just man could never suffer a genuine heart. And for this reason, Socrates, one of the greatest, most heroic men that ever existed, a paradigm of what humanity can achieve within the individual, was a philosopher. And for the same reason, 
Jesus of Nazareth was a priest, ambiguous, suffering, mysterious, and ultimately salvific. Go on to say, weakness relates us profoundly with other people. It allows us to feel with them the human condition, the human struggle, darkness and anguish that call out for salvation. This is why Paul can boast of his weakness. Because he knows that it's everybody's story. And he also knows that in we're able to boast and recognize our weakness, it's there that we find Jesus. I can stand up in, in, in our giftedness and the things and the great things and all the things that Paul suffered, but it wasn't there that he needed Jesus. It was in his weakness, in his brokenness, in his struggle. That's my story, it's your story, it's the people that we get to minister to. This invitation to allow the Lord to encounter us there. And it is in there that we finally hear Paul say, and it's in my weakness that Christ is made strong. It's in my weakness and my recognition and my being able to embrace that, that Jesus is ultimately able to manifest himself and reveal to us this deep, profound, even in our strength and our greatness, we, we know we, we need, cognitively, we know we need God. But in our weakness, we know we need God. That place where we said, I got nowhere else to go. If you don't show up, if you aren't here, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's there that the Lord shows himself. We celebrate that here, right? We're about to pray and the Lord is going to transform bread and wine and he's going to once again show us his weakness and comes to us vulnerable, broken, bruised, and he makes us whole. Brothers, let us rejoice and celebrate our weakness.